Ukrainians officially crossed Dnipro river and Russians are now forced to withdraw from the south, specifically both from Kherson region and partially from Zaporozhye region, because otherwise they are at a very big risk of being encircled. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and briefly see some most recent footage. And our first video comes to us from Belarus. And as you can see right here, Russian military vehicles are being transported by train closer to the border with Ukraine. Our next picture comes to us from Kharkov region, where we can see the remainings of Russian Su-34 fighter jet. Next we go to Russia, to Digilova airport, which is located in Rizany region. And according to Russian sources, a truck carrying petroleum suddenly ignited, caught on fire and exploded. They also mentioned that as a result of this, a couple Russian fighter jets were minorly impacted. And as you can see right here, these are these insignificant damages they are talking about. And speaking about Russian airports, some more <laughs> loud noises were heard today in Engels airport located in Saratov. As you can see from this video recorded by security camera, allegedly a Ukrainian drone attacked the airfield. As a result of this, several Russian planes were damaged and reportedly the drone responsible for this attack is 2141 Strish. And the main question is how this drone was able to fly for more than 700 kilometers without being intercepted by a Russian air defense system, but that's another story. All right, and now let's go to Mariupol. And as you can see from this video, Russians are demolishing the residential buildings, which have been severely damaged as a result of the shelling. The Russian side says that they do it for security reasons and so that they can build new apartment buildings. But in response to that, Ukrainians claim that Russians are simply trying to hide the evidence of their war crimes. And then, as you can see from this satellite image, several neighborhoods have all of their buildings completely demolished. Next, we have a very interesting video from Crimean Bridge, where we can see President Putin driving Mercedes through this bridge. The Russian propaganda explained that the reason he was not driving a Lada it is because Mercedes was the only available car at that moment. And then according to the representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Maria Zaharova, Zelensky, who is always sitting in bunker, should learn from Putin how to appear on public. And yes, I'm not even kidding here. She actually said it to Zelensky, who visited her son, which has been liberated less than a week before his arrival. But okay, and now let's get back to footage, because this Monday there was another mass attack of Russians against Ukraine. The air raid sirens were sounding pretty much across the entire country. And right here, for example, we have a video from Kiev, where we can see people hiding in the subways. And then according to Alexei Kloba, Russians once again targeted the energy infrastructure. And as a result of this attack, approximately 40% of Kiev residents are without electricity. Next we go to Kharkov, where we can see pretty much the same picture, is that Ukrainians are hiding in the subways. Our next stop brings us to Krivoye Roh, where approximately 3 to 5 allowed explosions were heard last night. Going more to the southwest, we have a video from Odessa, where we can see the consequences of Russians attacking the energy infrastructure of the city. And then right here is the picture from Kherson, which has been attacked by Russians as well. Like mentioned previously, almost the entire territory of Ukraine has heard air raid sirens this past day. And then on this map we can see the locations marked by a fire picture, which has been impacted the most. And the areas with the Ukrainian flag are those places where Ukrainian air defense system was predominantly successful. And then according to the Ukrainian air forces, more than 60 missiles out of 70 plus which Russia launched against Ukraine have been successfully intercepted. Which brings the effectiveness of the Ukrainian air defense system to be approximately 86%. 
The previous history shows that after such mass attacks by Russians, we usually have some major events happening. And if you don't want to miss any of these updates in the nearest future, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and ask me a question and I will reply to you. Alright, and now let's really quick talk about the situation in the East. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukraine's counteroffensive was mainly along Svatovy Kremina Road, while the main focus of Russians was next to Bakhmut and Avdiivka. And according to Russian sources, Ukrainians brought three military groups to Kremina to increase their pressure against the city. And then according to Zelensky, the most active combat area right now is around Bakhmut and Solidar, where Russians constantly bring new and new reinforcements. And now let's take a look at the map, which shows us the changes in territorial control. And first of all, Ukrainians were able to recapture a little bit of Marinka, but as we go to the north, we can see that Russians were able to contest a little bit of area close to Pervomaiske. Even though the main focus of Russians is next to Bakhmut, Ukrainians were able to push the contested area closer to the occupied territory. But going to the north of Bakhmut, we have more grey contested area spreading to the west of Yakovlevka. And then, as we go to Svatovy Krimin Road, we can see that both countries were able to push their front lines closer to each other. And then right here, we have a video allegedly from Luhansk region, where Ukrainians were able to successfully intercept Russian K-52 helicopter. Going more to the south, to Donetsk, we can see the debris of missile which is stuck in the road. And then right here is video also from Donetsk, which shows that there was a fire in the city center. Our next video comes to us from Bakhmut, where we can see the bird's eye view of the city. And as you can see, unfortunately, the city is in complete ruins. And speaking about Bakhmut, Russians want this city to be captured so much that the Russian propagandists started creating fake news. For example, right here we have a picture of Chechens standing next to Bakhmut train station. This picture has been heavily circulated among Russian media and they were saying that these are basically Kadyrovtsi, which are Chechen soldiers fighting for Russia. But in reality, these are the Chechens who switched the side and started fighting on the side of Ukraine. These are the Sheikh Mansur Battalion Chechens. And to completely destroy the fake news, which are being spread by the Russian propaganda, a Ukrainian soldier recorded a video from the inside of Bakhmut. He basically walks around a destroyed city and says that it is still under full control by Ukrainians. And as you can see, today I have way more footage, but unfortunately more than 90% of it I cannot use on YouTube. For this reason I uploaded some of it to my Discord and the rest will be available on my Patreon. And if you want to see these prohibited photos and videos, the links will be down below. Alright, and now let me present you a very quick update from the south. And first of all, as you can see from this picture, we have the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Oleksiy Reznikov, who is visiting Kherson airport. Which basically means that since now, Ukrainians officially crossed the river. This fact has been confirmed by the Institute for the Study of War, and the general assumption is that it will significantly help Ukrainians to launch and maintain a successful counteroffensive in the southern part of Kherson region. And here is how it can happen. First of all, if you remember from my previous episodes, last week Ukrainians landed on Kinburn Spit, but due to operational silence, there was not much information available. At the same time, Russians started withdrawing a little bit further from Dnipro river. And most likely, the reason for this, it is because there was an anticipation that Ukrainians will advance to the east. And since there was way fewer Russian soldiers on the left side of Dnipro river, Ukrainians, like mentioned previously, were able to officially cross it in another place. In addition to withdrawing further from the river itself, important quote-quote people of Russia were also withdrawing deeper inside Kherson region and even into Crimea. And reportedly, they left fresh conscripts on the first lines of defense to cover their retreat. But previously, the retreat of Russians was relatively slow and organized. 
And now, since more and more Ukrainians started crossing the river, I'm assuming that uh, this retreat will become chaotic and people will be just basically running for their lives. And as a result of all of this, we might potentially see the liberation of Kinburn Speed as well as the left bank of Dnipro River in the nearest future. And in addition to that, Russians reportedly increased their withdrawal from Oleshki. And previously, their next stops were in Brilinka, Chaplinka and Armyansk. But now, according to several other reports, they started withdrawing even deeper inside Crimea. And so, in addition to more and more Russians literally abandoning the Kherson region, we have several other claims that something similar is about to happen in Zaporozhye as well. And first of all, according to the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, both countries, Russia and Ukraine, agreed not to attack the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. And as a part of this agreement, the forces which are currently present on the territory of this power plant, which are Russians, must be withdrawn. The Russian media and the propagandistic channels are trying to present this to the people of Russia as another gesture of a goodwill. But most likely, the real reason why Russians gave up this plant so relatively easy, it is in order to avoid being surrounded. Because once again, Ukrainians were able to cross Dnipro river and as soon as they gain the foothold, they will start liberating the rest of the region. And at the same time, if you remember from the last several weeks, there was an increase in the combat activities in the Porozhye region, specifically in the direction of Tokmak. And as you can already see it right here, Ukrainians, before concentrating their efforts against Militopol, most likely they will try to cut Energodar. And that is exactly why I personally think that Russians decided to give up the Porozhye nuclear power plant so easy, so that they have enough time to retreat to, for example, Militopol. Because otherwise, thousands of Russians located in this area are at very high risk of being encircled and at best being taken as prisoners of war. As you can pretty much see, most likely in the near future we will see some major events, such as full liberation of the Porozhye nuclear power plant. And yes, if you don't want to miss any of these updates, just please once again subscribe to my channel, it only takes one click. And if you want to support my work, please consider becoming my channel member, use the PayPal link or become my Patreon, where you receive early access to the additional content. All the other useful links can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you tomorrow.